Welcome to Ronin Travel Pages, the show where we take a deep dive into history and culture through martial weapons. Today, we're going to be covering the Court Sword. The Court Sword is a smaller sized rapier-like weapon popular in the mid-17th century Europe. Fun fact, this sword is eerily reminiscent to Arya Stark's needle from the Game of Thrones. So let's stick him with the pointy bit and get started. What's up guys, Big Bang Michael Lasky here. Welcome to my parlor and let's get talking about the court sword, shall we? The court sword, or small sword, was modeled after its bigger brother, the rapier, where a rapier might be upwards to about 42 inches long, a court sword was between 24 and 33 inches long, by comparison. Likely birthed in France, it was probably the sword épée fencing was modeled after. Now, if you guys are interested in the different kinds of swords involved in sport fencing, let me know in the comments. We could do a whole nother video on that topic. And while you're at it, like and subscribe. Don't be stingy. During the 18th century, the court sword was used as a status symbol or a fashion accessory. Napoleon Bonaparte wore it in the Battle of Austerlitz and kept it all his life. Even your humble host wore it when he got hitched. Basically, if you wanted to be considered a gentleman, albeit a violent one, you would have worn a court sword daily. Now it's because of this, a court sword was often called a dress sword. In a fight, you would have preferred to have a rapier, but the length of a rapier often made it cumbersome and difficult to use indoors. So a smaller, more ornately adorned sword was perfect. This sword was gifted to me by President of Cold Steel, Lynn Thompson, for my wedding. I put a link in the description if you want to get one yourself. Sometimes Americans like to take credit for the never unarmed sentiments when it comes to weapons, but we forget how prominent carrying weapons in Europe actually was. A popular saying of the time was, no man is fully dressed without his sword. You see, 18th century France was a pretty contentious place. King Louis XXV was only five years old. There was the Seven Year War, France was backing us in the battle against the Redcoats, and of course, we had the beginning of old Napoleon's coup d'etat. That was Neapolitan ice cream. That's not the same thing. Oh, did you know that the last official court duel took place with a pair of court swords in 1967? For real. Some mayor insulted a French dude in the National Assembly who demanded satisfaction by duel. And they straight up grabbed a pair of small swords and played stab tag in the courtyard. We're talking just like 50 years ago. Dude, my dad was alive then. Speaking of which, court dueling is a bit different than sport fencing that you might see in the Olympics. A proper opaque fencing match only allows movement on a linear plane, where a court sword duel allows you to take angles and move in circles, and though only thrusts are permitted due to the fact that the court sword has no edge but a point, epee matches don't permit strikes below the waist. A court duel will allow you to strike wherever you please, though lower body strikes tend to be less deadly and thus used less. If you're interested in court-style duels, there is a growing movement of historical fencers that put on tournaments much in the same style that you've seen me compete in in my Instagram page. Yes, follow me there, that was a shameless plug. But June 1st, I am competing in the first ever Mars Warrior Challenge. Groups of combative weapons martial artists are gathering near Los Angeles from around the world and in all different fighting disciplines to compete in court-style duels. There will even be a novice division so newbies can try it out. I'll put a link in the description. If you guys are near that area, it's gonna be a lot of fun. The Court Sword's short length allows you to wield it with good dexterity, and its razor-sharp point allows you to run through your opponent with pinpoint accuracy. Forged in triangular cross-sections, it gives it its sturdy ability to parry, then attack and thrust within an instant. A sturdy hilt and knuckle guard allows you to bash your handle into your opponent for an unexpected bludgeon attack or a less-than-deadly warning. Now the court sword may have fallen out of everyday fashion, but here in the States, we still honor the French's contribution to our independence through our Model 1980 non-commissioned officer sword, still in use today for army ceremonies. 
and every service member today, with experience in using the bayonet, has the court sword to thank, as the moves were largely adapted from the court sword. Now guys, I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into history via the court sword. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. I'm going to be using this court sword for a Blade of the Nerd entry, where I teach you guys how to use Arya Stark's needle from the Game of Thrones. And if you guys have any ideas of any swords that you want to see on this channel in the future, let me know in the comments. I'll try to make it happen for you. Until then, I've been Michael Lasky. This is Ronin Travel Pages. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, it's me again. One of the things that I love about this medium is the ability for you guys to take an active role in sponsoring the content you like while being able to promote your own products and services. So if you're a weapons maker or a manufacturer and you want me to do a historical dive on a weapon that you've been making, contact me on the back end of my channel. We can figure out how to make that happen. Or maybe you make a cool nerdy shirt that you want me to wear on an episode and provide a link for people to purchase at the end of the video. We could talk about that too. But if you don't have a business, and you still want to support the show, go to my Patreon page, patreon.com slash bigbangmike. You can throw in any amount of money there and become a producer on my show. But if you don't, that's cool too. I hope you enjoyed the video.